Hey, Matt here, and this is a troubleshooting video for the URL harvester. So if you're having issues, you can do some self-troubleshooting and kind of understand what the common problems are. Um, the first and the biggest problem that I see is people don't get the results that they expect. They get um, no results or way less than they think they should or less than they do when they search it on Google or whatever engine they're using on a web browser or less than a friend or coworker is getting, that sort of thing. So. Um, for instance, if I want to go here and hit test and just start harvesting, um, I'm going to go ahead and yes, and I go through here, it'll show one connection, it'll show proxies used, but it'll show completed with zero results. Um, and I see people say, well, what's going on? Well, clearly you can see um, everything failed here because it's red. That's a nice key, not completed versus completed. Um, and then sometimes it'll say completed but no results as well. Uh, you look here, this is just a made up proxy, it's not a real proxy. So that was an example, but the premise here is that the first thing you always want to do if you're having issues with harvesting is to uncheck the use proxies box. Now you wouldn't want to go harvest like 10,000 keywords here, um, but you can do a simple test um, and get some basic results and see if things are working. So. We'll see here and you, we can immediately start to see results on uh, that sort of thing. And I've got a 403 on my, my IP address because I went too much harvesting and I got it banned by AOL for the time being. So that's what that's about and I didn't check off Bing. But you can see, so I got some results um, and through here 1,355 results. So remove proxies is the first thing that you always want to do um, when you're having issues. The next thing you can do is go to settings and use multi-threaded harvester you can go ahead and uncheck that and when you don't use the multi-threaded harvester you're going to use the single threaded harvester so i'm just going to type in a new keyword here car and hit start harvesting and what we'll see is a new window here where we can see everything as it's happening so see here i've got a 302 error from from aol where my ip is banned um, I've got um, results from Google and Yahoo where you can see results completed, but the status column is key. So when you start to see errors in the status column as you're harvesting, that's key. So when you see 302 from Google, that's IP blocked. Or when you see 999 from Yahoo, that's IP blocked. Um, 403 or 302 from, from AOL is also um, an IP blocked. And then um, similar from um, being. If you start to see things like 404 error or 500 or 403, um, 407, stuff like that, those are it, all errors that are not going to be returned from a search engine. You can go up here to help and there's an error code reference. I uh, can't get to it because this window is open, but I'll show you in a second. Um, an error code reference. You can also search them on Google um, or whatever. Um, but like 404, page not found. A search engine is never going to not be found or be offline. 500 internal server error is not going to be there. 407 is uh, authentication required. 403 is forbidden. Um, you, you know you can get the 403 error from AOL, but like Google and Yahoo, they don't ever return 403 errors. Um, so if you're seeing 403 errors for Google and Yahoo, being if you're seeing 407s or 404 stuff like that, those are all proxy errors. Um, and that means that your proxies are bad or banned or malfunctioning or you've put in the wrong username password or you need to set up IP authentication if they're private proxies. Um, you, or of course you can use your username and password for private proxies, but that sort of thing. So the status column is really key. You can uh, look at those and then uh, up here under help, we can look at server air code reference and we can kind of scroll through and see what all the air codes are. The next is the fact that um, people tell me that uh, the results being returned by Scrapebox are relevant to their keywords. So if they type in car, they might get um, random things that aren't related to cars. Or if they're looking for green cars, or they're looking for blue widgets, or whatever. Um, they don't get relevance. Now, the reason for that is is that relevance in Google, they focus on the top 10 results. Uh, relevance drops off, especially after the first 100 results, and dramatically after, you know, in the latter end of the 500 to 1,000 results range. So if, I, if I'm looking for something like, say I'm looking for like lawn care services in LA. So if I go here and then I jump down to um, more results and get later on in, and I go into admitted results and that sort of thing, um, I'll start to see stuff like this. 
Britain treats Europe like a self-service. Now, clearly, that has nothing to do with lawn care service in Los Angeles, California. This is a UK-based site. The point here is that um, no one ever visits these results in a web browser, for the most part. Um, no one's going to go browsing around way deep in the results. On average, they're going to look at the first 10 results, and that's going to be 95% or more of where the traffic goes. And then the top 100 results is 99 like six or something percent results are all within the top 100. So most people don't ever go looking. And so when you see these results in Scrapebox, it's because Scrapebox does. It digs all the way down to the 1,000 limit max, which we'll talk about in a minute. And um, it brings in all these results. So um, the issue here is not that Scrapebox is bringing in unrelevant results. It just hands your keyword to Google or Yahoo or whatever you choose. And then it gets back whatever Google or Yahoo gives it. It works just like a web browser. I mean, Google, as far as it's concerned, it sees Scrapebox as a web browser just like you're a regular user. Um, it has no idea that Scrapebox is giving it the request, so it gives it the same results. So relevance has nothing to do with Scrapebox itself. It's what Google gives and what Yahoo gives and all that sort of stuff, and they are focused on where the majority of the traffic is, and that would be the top 10 results um, with a max of the top 100 results, but even within the top 100 you're going to start to see relevance drop off uh, like a cliff a lot of times after the first 10 results. And um, depends on how broad the term is, but anyways, that's the concept on relevance. It has nothing to do with Scrapebox, it's just that algorithms want to return results, so um, they give you everything they think is somewhat related. And to that end, the next thing is that um, people say, well, in Scrapebox, I changed the limit to 1,000 here. And, um, or the limit's already at 1,000. I change it to like 5,000. But as soon as I go to do anything, Scrapebox changes it back to 1,000, just like that. That's because all engines limit the maximum results to 1,000. So even if I go back here and I go searching for car, just real basic, um, because there's, you know, umpteen million results for that. And then I go here and I start searching for, um, go to the end here. I've got it set to 100 results per page. And I'm on page nine here. So basically I'm looking at, um, you know, the max out of results. You can see that in order to show more relevant results, I can repeat with omitted results. And so let's do that and get to page 10. And here I am, 1,000 results, nothing more. So um, engines cap out. So even though it says up here 6 billion results, it's not going to show me more than 1,000. And here I am on page 10 out of 6 billion results. And um, I'm capped out. I can't see any more results because it doesn't show me any more results. So that's why Scrapebox changes that limit back to 1,000 because it doesn't matter what you punch in there. When Scrapebox goes browsing through these web pages and pulls these results off, just like a browser would, um, it can't get any more than 1,000 results. So it's not a Scrapebox limitation, it's a engine limitation that is max of 1,000 results. And the next thing is omitted results. So um, you can see here, in order to, on my search, I got to page nine, and in order to show you most relevant results, we've omitted some entries very similar to the 839 already displayed. If you like, you can repeat the search with omitted results. Scrapebox does not go in and search these omitted results. It only searches what Google gives you. So if you jump in and you see a web browser and you see 6.1 billion results, and then you only get back like 900 results, you're like, what happened? I didn't get back a full thousand. There's plenty there. Well, it's because when you got down the road here, to page nine or whatever page it happens to be, Google went ahead and omitted those results. Um, and you could see that earlier in my search, it said something like eight pages when I was searching for uh, lawn care there in LA. But when I jumped down, it stopped at page five and the rest were omitted results. So Google does that sort of thing. Um, and Scrapebox is not gonna go in and pull these omitted results. It is going to pull just the first most relevant results that Google gives it. Um, another thing that's important to note is I see some people that say, things like um, that the results that they get back in Scrapebox, say they search for like the first 20 results and they compare them by hand to the first 20 results that are in Google. Um, and if I wanted to do that sort of thing, like if I go back here and I'm just looking at um, the first 20 results here and then I set this to 20 here so that I can pull those results and they 
compare them, they find that they're different, or there might be a couple URLs different. That is because um, Scrapebox uses different setups for different engines as far as number of results per page, user agents, stuff like that, so that it can appear random. For instance, right here I have it set to Google with 100 results per page. That's why this is so long here. Um, if I use, if I were to look at these Google results and compare them by hand, if I took the top 100 results by setting it to 100 results per page, and then I took and set it back to 10 results per page, and I copied down all those top 100 results from the top 10 pages at 10 results per page, I would find some variation in there. Also, if I launch Firefox or Chrome or Internet Explorer, or I'm on a Mac and I use Safari or whatever, and I use different user agents or Ubuntu, something like that, um, it can return variations in results. Um, of course, your IP address, if you're using proxies, depending on your, your physical location of the proxy, it might hit a different data center, which might return different results. So all those things can factor into getting um, somewhat slightly different results from what you actually see in a web browser. But you can rest assured that um, Scrapebox isn't making up these results. It's only giving you back what Google gives it. So um, you know that is the reason why you're getting slightly different results if you get different results it's because Google or Yahoo that sort of thing IPs and locations and user agents proxies results per page that sort of thing and then um, I'll also be doing a video on an actual how-to for the harvester um, and I'll put a link up in this video once that's done and link to it and so that is the basic steps that you can do to self troubleshoot the URL harvesting process in Scrapebox